So, as I've mentioned many, many times before, I've always been a PlayStation Hello. gamer first because I do mess around with the competition. You, you can't tie me down. Seriously, I'm all over the place. Beyond the PS5, which I've already reviewed, you can click the eye above my head for that. I've been playing a lot on my Xbox Series S. I reviewed that as well, click the eye above my head. And most recently, I've been playing a whole lot of Pokemon Snap on the Nintendo Switch. I haven't reviewed that on my channel, but I have reviewed it for Laptop Mag, so click the link in the description to read that. A month ago, I got the chance to get a taste of PC gaming in the form of the Opsys Agilion X. That comes with 11th gen Intel Core i5, 16 gigs of RAM, an RTX 3060 Ti GPU, and a terabyte and a half of storage. And now after a month of using this as my daily driver for games, productivity, everything, I'm ready to answer a couple of questions. Is it any good and is it worth the money? Let's find out. Wait, 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 wait. First of all, let's find out is not the words that I use to go into the intro reel. And second, of course it's good. With specs like these, it's getting pretty hard to get a pre-built gaming PC wrong. And let's be honest, if I've sat here for 10 minutes telling you my experience with a computer, it will make for quite a boring video. So let's make things interesting. Let's spice the dish a little. Much like a lot of you out there, I'm a console gamer first, as I said at the top. But is PC gaming better? And more importantly, could it be better enough to replace your console? Let's get into it. Help and welcome to New Rising Media, your home of hands-on reviews and gloves-off opinions about tech and gaming. I'm Jason Lingland, all-round nerd journalist, and I thank you right there for taking the time out of your busy day to check out this video. Cheers. Right, I obviously called this a one-month review, so I will give you a review of the Opsys of Gillian X. Full declaration off the top, Opsys sent me this review unit to check out over a month and give you some long-term impressions of it. The Agilion line at the moment is starting at £999 with a configuration that comes with a GTX 1660 graphics card, which is fine for most 1080p gaming. The middle of the pack, which I think many of you will probably go for, is the Agilion V, which has Intel Core i5 11400F a RTX 3060, 16 gigs of RAM and a terabyte and a half of storage. That's going for £1,249 at the moment. What I'm reviewing here is the Agilion Whee! X, the top of the line one that comes with the Intel Core i5 11500 and the RTX 3060 Ti. But this is the chance for me to do something that I've rarely seen YouTubers do. And that is actually talk like a grown up about the differences between console gaming and PC gaming, and which I would recommend. Because for some odd reason, this is still a topic that people get pretty touchy about. But if there's one thing that we can all agree on, it's that games are f***ing mint. And I'm not giving up on this chance to not just review this beast, but also use this time as a chance to figure out for myself which I prefer between PC gaming and console gaming. And I hope that taking you along on this journey with me helps you make those decisions for yourself too. And we start doing that in the place that we always do, in talking about the hardware. Now, let's make no bones about it. This is huge. And I thought the PS5 was massive. So this well and truly takes the cake. And as you can tell, it's RGB filled, it's massive, bright and colorful. Not necessarily my cup of tea, as you've probably Ooh. guessed based on what I normally wear in these videos and the more dark muted tones of things that I pick and a setup on my desk. But visually, I don't know, I've kind of been coming around to it. I will just spend some time looking at all the components running in here. Kind of like my dad when he popped the bonnet on a particularly powerful car and look at the engine running. It's seeing a machine at work and that is pretty fascinating to look at, but that's not to ignore the size and the weight of it, which in turn does cause some problems. Two specifically from me, one, I don't like my desk feeling so cluttered. Like, I like to have more wide open space, but this thing doesn't fit underneath because of how tall it is. Now I get it's more of a problem with the desk that I've got and the height of the support being just underneath here, but the heft of it does lead to the second problem, which I do play a lot of games in here, but I also like to play a lot of games in the living room. I like to take the console through, wire it up to the massive 4K TV and just spend the whole day, crack a couple of beers and just have a good laugh. Specifically with my Series S, that is super easy. I just unplug it, take it through, 
plug it in, jobs are good in. And whether it is the Super Light Series S or the slightly less portable and quite a bit heavier PS5, but still mobile, it's fine. I'd love nothing more than to do that with the Agilion X. I'd love to see how this GPU performs on a massive 4K screen, but I can't because a keyboard and mouse interface doesn't necessarily gel well with a living room experience. And I'm not gonna cart this thing through. It's huge. Where am I gonna put it around the TV? Word of advice if Opsys is watching this. If you were to maybe do a mini ITX case version of the Agilion, I would bite your hand off to get one. Like, seriously. Apologies to anyone named Ethan Winters for saying that, but Forza Horizon 4 on max settings compared to a Series S, it's a revelation and I want to play that so bad on my TV, but I can't. Please make my dreams come true. And speaking of settings and resolution, let's talk about performance and usability. Now, I've gone in depth into what is in this machine already, and you can watch that yourself by clicking on the eye above my head for the unboxing of this thing, which was a whole experience in and of itself. But performance wise, this is slap bang in the middle of gaming PC potential. And that is a great place to be for someone like me, because not only does this work well as a gaming rig, I'll go into the games later on, but it also works really, really well for Creative Pro workloads like mine and also for the essential day to day. It becomes that all in one machine. The Intel Core i5 11500 is incredibly capable. The RTX 3060 Ti, given all the results of testing that I'd seen coming out from different websites, is a lot more powerful than I imagined. And the storage pairing of a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD and a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard disk drive has both the speed and the density to fit even the more space intensive games like Call of Duty Warzone. And beyond that, there's nothing else really to say in this category. I mean, comparing it back to consoles, there's obviously a material benefit of having something this much more powerful and this much more capable. And it also does a lot more stuff. And now the games, the one category where I've been most conflicted. Because on the face of it, there are no two ways about it. PC games are usually cheaper, Plus there are so many more free games thanks to the weekly Epic Games drop. And this is all down to monopolization. Xbox and PlayStation know that if you buy their box, then that is the only system you will buy games for, which gives them the power in that situation to control the pricing, which with the cost of getting the games to the consumer, drives the prices up a little bit. With the vast majority of PC games bought and downloaded online via the likes of Steam, GOG, there is very little cost in getting your game on those services, which means in turn, the cost is reduced for the consumer and the competition between all the services drives the price down even further. And not only that, they look so much better on this. Plus there's really no such thing as backwards compatibility problems on a PC because there's only been one format and that's the PC. <laughs> Give or take a few super old games and provided you're willing to put in the work to make some of the older stuff work, then you can play whatever you want. Like I managed to fire up Lego Island on this thing. If anybody can be a ray tracing mod for Lego Island, I'll be eternally grateful. Of course, there are PlayStation exclusives, stuff that I will never ever be able to play on this because of certain deals. And given that some of these games are like my favorites of all time, that sucks. And to be fair, that is the whole PlayStation vision. That's the reason why you buy the box because you want that stuff that you can't get anywhere else. All the ease of being able to play games in my living room with it for a completely different, more relaxed atmosphere than playing at my desk. But on the first two points alone, it's hard not to say that the PC is better in the long term for game availability. And speaking of long term, what does the future hold for PC gaming? Now, at first I thought this was a weird kind of category because the components decide what the future of PC gaming is. And the fact that the industry is so active, just take a look at the GPU shortages at the moment. And unlike consoles, all of this is completely modular. You can make sure that your build is up to date with the latest hardware needed to play the latest games at their best. Like you're not stuck with a fixed box for a select amount of years until the next box comes along. Now, more specifically to the Agilion X, Opsys achieves this with some pretty impressive customer service and warranty options, which allows you to inquire about upgrading particular parts of your PC. Like, let's say I want a new GPU, let's say, 
where a few years down the line and I see that there's a 4060 Ti and I'm like, ooh, I'll take that. I can go back to these guys. They'll find the best price through their network vendors. You send the PC back to them and they'll fit it with zero labor costs, which is pretty good. And there's other things at play here like an annual health check of your computer to make sure it's working at its best and a pretty decent warranty that protects you for quite a while. In the long term and more big picture thinking, surely then it makes more sense to drop the bigger amount of money on this as it should, emphasis on should, given how the costs of components are being driven up at the moment by shortages, it should be better value for money to just fit new parts when they come out. Obviously, that's not taking into account how the console model works. With something like a console, it's a lot simpler. It's just, like I said at the beginning of this segment, it's just a box that you plug in, and no matter what happens, you've got support for games. And as you see with the numerous console war posts and articles and videos, there's some very specific dealings happen in the background to ensure that your console doesn't go out of date quick. Like I say for a select number of years, you normally get five to seven years out of a console generation, which is pretty good, to be honest. So let's sum all this up because we've got two big questions here to ask. First, is the Opsys Agilion X gaming PC any good? Of course it is. I said that at the top. This is a quality pre-build that they've put a lot of time and effort into ensuring it looks clean and tidy for you. You can see the attention to detail in the design here. The components are more than enough for whatever games you wanna throw at it, but also for more than just PC gaming. So this can become your daily driver pretty successfully. The pricing is a bit on the premium side when you look at the mid-tier parts being used and look comparatively, but the post-purchase support, in particular the warranty, the upgrading parts with zero labor costs, the annual health check, all kind of balance that out in the long run provided you use it. And second, can PC gaming replace the console for me? This was a weird one because at the beginning, my answer would have been an easy yes. The PC offers better graphics, a greater variety of games, a greater variety of gameplay types. Try playing a real-time strategy game on a PlayStation, all of which are usually at a cheaper price than you'll find on PlayStation and Xbox. It comes with better upgradability, and at the end of the day, it's still a PC. You can actually get stuff done on here too. But the more I've been playing on this in here in front of my desk, and the more I've been playing on my consoles in different rooms and the different experiences that I've been having, it's become a lot more murky. Consoles are cheaper than PCs. They have a stellar line of exclusive titles. The focus purpose of a console means it is far easier to use and it's just as easy as open up the game and starting to play. There isn't any kind of settings features that you may need to tweak or menus upon menus of visual settings that you need to change to get it to work at its best, it just does. All of that makes it a difficult question to answer. And personally for me, much like Natalie Ambrulia, I'm torn. Gun to my head, I'd probably go for the versatility and the focus experience of a console over a gaming PC, primarily because I already have a good laptop in the form of the M1 MacBook Pro, review in the eye above my head, that I use to get stuff done. But machines as good as this have their place in changing people's minds. And the obvious observation, regardless of what I was gonna say, it's all up to you. If you already have something to do your day-to-day -day work on, and you don't necessarily need the best specs, you just want a box that plays really, really good games that look great enough on that big telly you've got, get a console. But if you've saved up a fair bit of money, you want to make a long-term investment, not just in play, but also in work. And you want the games to look at their absolute best and be priced better, then you really will not be disappointed by the Opsys Agilion X. Okay, that is gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching this. Different kind of review, I get that, but I hope it's helped. I hope that my confusion has helped you figure out some things for yourself. But what do you think? Are you more of a PC gamer? Are you airing on the side of consoles? Go ahead and let me know in the comments. And as always, likes if you enjoyed the video, subs if you loved it, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.